John, yes, tell, tell everyone where we're at right now uh, and why at, you like it here. We're at Pubby's in uh, Little Ferry, New Jersey, mm. close to Hackensack. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, barbecue places. One of your favorite places to stop for food for the family, right? Yep. You know, you know, I bring out the, the guys over here too for corporate dinners. Nice, you man. Know? Yeah, and sometimes, you, you know, I've been here uh, before, you know. John, for for all that don't, for all of you out there that don't know, John and I are pretty close friends. I'm um, in a developed over hatch, which is what I think is one of the best things about the hat community, you know. You and I just developed a relationship around hats. Now, I talk to you more than I do some of my family members. <laughs> you realize that, John? Yeah, I do, I think. But I like it, man. You know, I know, I know people say, uh, you know, oh, Pierre, you know, you you, ha you favor my fittings. I damn right I do because one of my closest friends runs a place, you know? <laughs> and he does some of the coolest shit out there, so. You know, first of all, thank you. I mean, you paid tonight, which is, which oh, is. My pleasure, my I mean, pleasure. I mean, that's, that's awesome. It's also, uh, it's pretty close to your spot in Patterson. It's not far, this place. Uh, it's not, it's like about 20, half an hour, 20, 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so John, I wanted to, uh, you know, a lot of folks, like, they find you to be mysterious. You don't like to be on video. You know, you don't like to have your picture taken. You know, you don't like any of that stuff. You kind of like to be, like, kind of behind the scenes, right? Yeah. So I certainly wanted to ask some questions and, and get to know you a little bit better in a setting that you're comfortable with. That's why we're here. Okay. You know, we're going to bribe you with uh, food and, <laughs> and some other stuff. But um, I wanted to start with some basic questions, really, John. And, you know, I wanted to start with, like, you know, tell us a little bit about, about the history behind uh, my fitteds and, and that sort of thing. I'd love, I, I think everyone out there would love to hear about it. I mean, it's, uh, it's a family business. We started back out in the early 90s. Hmm. Um, and then it sort of, you know, trickled down from my parents, you know, doing whatever they can to put food on the table for us, mm -hmm. set the stage basically for my brother and I. And uh, we took over, expanded, and um, here we are, basically. That's a long story short. So, we our asses off, that's for sure. <laughs> no, you guys do. Every time I'm in the store too, I love when I see your mom and dad there. <laughs> your brother stopping by to pick something up for the White Plains location. Yep. It's always fantastic to see the operation. And the employees are all happy there. I really enjoy being in there because even the folks that are kind of just, you know, grabbing shoes for customers, ringing people out, it's really awesome to see the vibe in there. It's awesome. Like, I mean, your launches are legendary. So I know everyone knows Hat Club NoHo, but to me, you know, it's got a great atmosphere, but I'm I'm like, I just love going to a MyFitis drop just because of the camaraderie that's out there. The same people showing up. and. You know, yeah, there's some resellers, but there's also a ton of people that just love the product, love the hat, and just want to get out there yeah. and be in the community. You know, the last time I was there, Jimmy was there filming. Mm -hmm. It was insane. There was like, I don't know, there must have been between the two locations, nine, 900,000 people. About 1,000 people. Think, yeah, yeah for, for a sliding bison hat, you know? And, and that day it happened to be the Whoppers was the other hot one, right? Yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't have thought that to be a popular choice I was shocked too but when yeah, you get there yeah. it's like they all talk to each other you start selecting what they think is gonna be the best hand and it takes on a life of its own but yep. I'd love to hear like you know a little bit about your history in, in terms of creating designs and colorways like where you get your inspiration from like because I mean you're the first person real that I've seen hook a hat to a book which is it's almost like it's interesting because hat culture can touch us about anything right but you found a way to to hook it to books so I'd love to hear more about like the inspiration and how you got into all this. So, um, you know, uh, my kids are avid readers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it all started with uh, me reading to my my kids. And I looked at the cover of the book. So that book set happened to be Magic Treehouse. Oh yeah. I looked at the book and I was yep. like, huh, this could probably make a good set so mm -hmm. I was like okay you know um, let's give it a try mm -hmm. and uh, stood up to like 4 a.m. that night you know mocking stuff up and then I think I showed I sent over some of the mock-ups to you the next day and I asked you what your thoughts were and you're like just 
go for it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. maybe I'm onto something here mm -hmm. because you're looking in from the third party, mm -hmm. from outside in. So I was like, okay. So I got my rep to Zoom with me. The next day, I sent them, you know, all the mock-ups. I want it to be like this. It's got to be a certain shade of green. And uh, he did a beautiful job translating whatever whatever vision I had. And fast forward, I think it was December 2020, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Fast forward a few months down the road and you get the actual product and I'm like, oh wow, this looks good. It's interesting because now you hear collectors out there calling your that green magic treehouse green. <laughs> and that's certainly not for any reason other than you were the first one to really put it into use in a way that was really meaningful. Um, and what I love most about that was the different UV colors, you know? Everyone was doing colorways in a very specific way with the same UV. This, the tie-in to this was really the thread color and the hat itself, but then the UVs all had a, a, their own distinct feel, which I thought made it a lot different than what was out there. So you're taking something that was kind of being used elsewhere in terms of a colorway applied to a bunch of things, but you hooked it to a book and then you made it different from the UV perspective. So that was fantastic. But then you had the Harry Potters, right? Yeah. And that's where you went completely off the off the rails. Yeah, so uh, then my... You asked me that too. You said, do you think I should do Harry Potter? I think I did. Yeah. yeah I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. I probably talked and I, to you and, about it. And, and after the, after the and Magic after Treehouse... After the Magic Treehouse, we're like, go for it. You and know what's I interesting like... is I don't really think too much about what you're asking me because I know you're smart. So I'm just like, yeah, just do it. I, I'm just giving you that last little vote of confidence and then, you're, and then you're putting together some magic. Yeah. And, you know, I do talk to a lot of people. You know, obviously, uh, I talk to you a lot because you bring the insight and that that does instill confidence in me to um, design those hats yeah but the harry potter was a, that's a funny thing because my son i read the whole magic tree house from the original to the merlin missions and he just sort of transitioned into like an avid reader and he started reading harry potter a few months after that mm. and i was like hmm you know, I bought the books when they first came out in the U United States mm -hmm. with the with the covers. And I was like, what if I translate some of, you know, the color coordination and tell the story with the hats? And I just I just clicked and, you know, and the rest is now history. And because of that, now I need to spend money to go to Universal Studios and, mm -hmm. and, and, and visit Hopefully, the, the movie set in the UK. Mm. But my son's bugging me. Like even my younger ones, it translated, just trickled down into my younger. You gotta sell some more hats. I sell lots of hats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So listen, you know that's a little bit about those specific things. But tell me what you love most about hat culture specifically. You're also a sneaker guy. I don't think people really realize that. But you and I talk sneakers a lot. You're constantly po pointing me in the direction where I should go from a sneaker perspective. So tell me what you love most about hat culture. It's um, it's different this time around. It just seems like a lot of people are engaged. Mm -hmm. And I, like you said, I love the camar camaraderie uh, and how other people are willing to help each other. Uh, and it's just uh, the fact that they love my storytelling. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just like, very surprised. I never would have thought anybody would like my, my storytelling yeah. you know, translated onto a hat. And you know, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't I just don't know what else to say. It's just uh, I'm very thankful. How is it like how does it connect to sneaker culture in your eyes? So you've been immersed in both businesses for most yeah. of your life, right? So how does it connect? Well you could um, get a nice colored hat you know, that tells a good story mm -hmm. and hook it to a beautiful sneaker, completely different brand, and it works. Yeah. And I know you do that all the time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> You man. post it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then I love every, it. You know, all the time, and I see it, and I'm like, wow, that works. Yeah, even the last picture I posted with this Cubs hat, right, I made sure that the little eyes in the Cub matched the sneaker. But it's easy when you have, like, when I have a huge collection, because I do, of my fitted hats, I can match any sneaker. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 
I mean, that that right there, it doesn't have to be the De La Soul Dunks. It could be, there's so many sneakers oh, you match dude, there's a lot of sneakers What's your, you do that. The tree lines right yeah, there the that you're wearing in matches. The tree yeah. lines goes nice with this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, this is something that I wanted to do for the longest. I mean, I did a De La Soul uh, Dunk matching hat back in 05 when it first dropped. When Dunks used to cost $70, but not anymore. Yeah, um, not anymore. And I just wanted to revisit it. Yeah. And thankfully, they were able to make my vision come true and it came out way better than I thought. It's so good, man. It's so good. Now listen, I have a question for you too. Like, you know, what are the what are the main differences between hat and shoe culture in your opinion? Like because a lot of people ask that question, right? They're like are are like hats the new shoes? Like, you know, you hear that a lot. So like what do you think the biggest differences are? Well, the biggest difference is that uh, hats are accessories basically mm -hmm. right they're not necessities yeah sneakers are yeah if you, if you look well at one it. pair is exactly yeah 200 is that's overboard but uh, 300, <laughs> 300 300 is where i'm at 300 so that's little, wow that's a lot yeah I mean, that's too many if i brought that many sneakers home my wife would just uh yeah probably mm. throw them all out and yeah. sell them at a garage well i don't have a wife like anymore so i guess i'm okay <laughs> so um yeah so when it comes to sneakers uh I think because everybody appreciates a good shoe, mm -hmm. there's a the audience is much bigger. You're right. No, 100. Everyone, everyone want, everyone needs to put on a pair of sneakers. Exactly. It was your point, right? Exactly. Hats, you don't have. Hats, to. you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. It's, it's an accessory, and it's still and hats a niche complicate market. things, right? Yeah. I mean, like when you start to put, when you got to match your pants, your shirt, your sneakers, your socks, then your hat. Like you know, holy shit! Like this is an awful lot of work. You know. You know. But then again, I mean, there's a, a lot of people like yourself who do it right. Well, because I'm bald, so I need to cover up my... Uh... But then again, I mean, you, you just cord color coordinated correctly. So, you know, yeah. some people, they just, um, I don't know, it's a, a little overkill. Just yeah. how back in the day, we used to have uh, oh, no. Two Chicago matchy Bulls matching. Because I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I... Did the same thing. No, you're right because like the natural match to a Jordan, right, was exactly. a Chicago that's, that's Bulls. That's how hat. the market was back then. Yeah, and but now you can take a New York Mets hat and do it. Yeah. I mean, Anthem in Canada did a four pack of Toronto hats to match Jordans. Yeah, it came out pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. and it came out nice. Yeah, it came out yeah. nice. It came out nice. So it was all like really matchy matchy. Now it's like you know, as long as you have a good story to uh, back it up mm -hmm. and good color coordination. People appreciate that, and, you know. Uh, I'm just hoping that um, I'll be able to tell more stories going forward. And this yeah. doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't think it's gonna stop. I always tell you. I think you have a unique space in the depth to which you hook things, and you don't get too narrow. So, and not only that, I think you're also listening to voices around you, which helps. Like, you know, I remember when we were talking about the Dilla hat, right? You didn't, you didn't even really know who Dilla was that that well. Not, not like I did, right? No, no. And you wouldn't have even thought to do that. You, yeah, you actually told me that hat wasn't gonna work. You, you said know a white UV is? wouldn't work. It's it's basically reliving a nightmare. Back in the day, like yeah. when that hat first came out, yeah, that was all the rage. Mm -hmm. You know, and the piping, the piping, all the flipped visor, yeah, uh, and everybody loved that sort of thing. Yeah. But then again, it just like faded away, mm -hmm. and it was like you know tied to that time period. Yeah. So when you approached me with that, I was like, hmm, I don't know. I mean, if history repeats itself, it might work, but then yeah. again, it might just sit. What did I tell you? It's going to work. And you're right. And uh, You had a pretty big pre-order on that. Yeah. Uh, you're, still very, me my, you're still paying me my, uh, my royalties. Your royalties, yes, of zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but listen, I think in a general sense, what I'm trying to get at is like you're, you're deriving your, your inspiration from so many sources that it makes you hard to compete with in my opinion so you know that's where I'm kind of going to right and I think that's what's special about what you're doing and that's not because you're my friend that's because I, I'm, I'm an observer and watching all this stuff happening it's it's amazing to see the depth to which you go to find inspiration right. and that sets you apart man honestly now let me ask you a question like I know the pink bottom really did like reignite the world right there's no there's no doubt you no, can't it, deny yeah. that it's it, it was something that just that sparked a, a real um, a real craze that was like nothing we've seen in many years, right? Right. Probably you know last time that happened was like the Spike Lee piece, right? That was probably the last time that was 
Oh, when it was going crazy before yeah. social media and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, 96. Yeah. 96, yeah. So let me let me ask you a question. You were in dire straits prior to that for not not the pink bottom, but a little bit before that. You were starting to get Oh, I think everybody was. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, you're right. hundred percent just like on their last legs and From like, a hat perspective. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was just that. Um, and yeah, I mean I <clears throat> I was being told, you know, why don't you try pink bundles? I'm like, what's mm. pink bundles? Yeah, yeah. Then I see the stories that Justin told and T eight hundred told and what Hack Club did, and I'm like, okay, I mean, yeah. you know, they're they're doing their thing. Yeah, I appreciate that. And um, you know, some some of the hats weren't really, I I would say most of the hats were not my style. Yeah, but I I was appreciating. It, yeah, you know, it was it was it, it, it told a good story, and it just I guess it just jump started. I guess it gave CPR. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. And I just want to ask one other question, too, in regards to that. So how does being in that tough moment drive you today? Because, listen, I think people f sometimes forget, right? This is a business that you're f that supports your entire family. Yeah. Right? And sometimes people, I don't think they understand the gravity of that, right? Like, you're, you're counting on your meals from this, from, the, from whether or not you're successful in this exactly. space. So tell me how it drove you, how it drives you today, you know, what happened back then. So it's it's making me more conscientious about what's going on, you know. Obviously, uh, I'm taking more time per design now, mm. uh, just to make sure that all the details are correct. Uh, it's just that I don't know exactly what the final product's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's there's that kind of iffy factor there. Um, I I tend to concentrate more. Yeah. You know, I just like. I redo everything. If I feel that this is not going to work, I start over, you know, from scratch and make sure that everything looks good. Mm. Um, and other than that, I mean, I started to listen to other people more. Yeah. You know. And just paying attention more, trying to keep your keep your finger on the pulse of the market, right? I'm trying to. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I mean, I think that's I think that's fair. Now let me ask you ask you uh, another question in regards to folks that you that you look up to out in the hat space. So give me a couple of names, people you look up to in the hat space. Um, I know T800's been in the hat game for a very long time. Uh, Ty Mathis mm -hmm. has been in the hat game for a long time. Um, obviously Justin's one of them, um, and then you got guys, you got smaller guys like For You Caps. Yeah. You know he, Lee does really well. Um, out there, uh, the one that really surprised me was Brian from Hat Heaven. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'd be able to sell <laughs> Brims just like that. It's yeah. just I don't, I, I, I don't know how he does it. He does I, it, man. I mean, he does it. So he's got a finger on the him. pulse of his like respect of his community, right? Not, so he knows what his community's I mean, looking yeah, for. As long as he knows what he's doing, I mean, yeah. that's that's his forte. He's not going to have lines, right? It's not like <clears throat> so. What I look at your your business like, right? Is like it's like you open the fire hydrant. <laughs> and then it empties out, right? And then, but his is more like you turn on the faucet and you just keep I the faucet mean, but on. Then again, you know, he's doing what he's what he's doing. They I, both have the same result, which is selling a lot of hats. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so and, that's and, perfect. I yeah, mean, that that works for it. That's his business model. So, kudos mm -hmm. to him. Uh, you know, guys like Uptown Jiggy, uh, when Aubrey was there back in the day, you know, yeah. he he did influence me a lot. Um, and then Cap City. Yeah. Cool from Cap City, uh, you know. That's in Teaneck, right? Yeah, Teaneck. We were going to head out there today, but they closed to a... They I think they five. still do... Um, curbside? curbside. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but... Uh, yeah, but he influenced me a lot, too. He's a great graphic designer by trade uh, before he opened up the shop. So, you know, we pretty much opened up our websites around the same time. So, mm. you know... Uh, I would call him a frenemy, I guess. <laughs> a frenemy. Well, he, I mean, yeah, he's a he's competitor, a competitor right? But then again, you know, he's a, yeah. he's a really... He's also someone that you drew inspiration from. Yeah, he's what, a... What frustrates you the most about this business? Uh, to be honest, um, not being able to tell my story first. Mm -hmm. That's what irks me. Well, yeah, because you're the head designer. I've said this before. You're the head designer at My Fitteds, Just Fitteds, and FamCap. So, like, that's a lot... Of, you're wearing a lot of different caps. Uh, I try not to, but unfortunately, yeah. it just turned out to be that way. Yes, yeah. but you know, all jokes aside, I it's you know, I, I once the, the 
the silhouettes in or the designs in, you know. I'm just hoping that I get the product eventually, yeah. whenever it is. But it, it just sucks that you put in so much effort and time just to have someone else beat you to the punch. Yeah. And they don't even know the story behind yeah, it. And it's totally like, okay, I get it. Yeah, you know, you want to put food on your table too, but. You know, then again, it's just you have the same you have the same opportunity to go make your own design. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I get it. You know, it saves you time. But uh, I still think that um, you know, each and every designer has their own talents and uh, yeah. they want to tell their own stories. So why not use the medium to do? What are you most proud of, John? What am I most proud of? Um, what hat wise? Whatever you want to talk about, John. What are you most proud of? Mm. Well, that to be, it could be anything, man. What are you most proud of? I am most proud of having my kids, and, you know, my kids mm -hmm. reading, so that they gave me inspiration to, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, make the hats that I that uh, sparked about your kids the revolution. Me, basically, yeah. uh, you know, if, if we're talking hats, I would say the Sean Witherspoon Bison. That's, yeah, that's one of the major ones. Oh man, that created a frenzy. That, yeah, I, I. But I don't know, like, if the if the Lucky Charms one didn't follow it up, I think it needed to have a great follow up too. I, I think the hat itself was fantastic, but I think the Lucky Charms uh, in the OG colorway, right? That OG Lucky Charms. I think that follow up cemented it. it. It that was like, it was almost like you had the fuel. Now that was like, you know, putting the pedal to the metal there. Yeah. Um, that I didn't. I really didn't think the cereal pack would do too well because mm. it consisted of minor league. Minor league, yeah. Uh, but then again, the reception was great. The people loved it. And uh, you know, I'm grateful. Uh, another one was the confection, mm -hmm. confectionery pack. Uh, that, uh, uh, I'm drawing a Oh, Neko Wafers. Neko Wafers, yeah. The Boston Red Sox. I remember showing it to you and you're like, Wow. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I was. I that was cemented forward. everything for me. Yeah, so, I loved it, man. You know, I'm like, hmm, I'm if there's any hat I'm asked about more than any other, it's that one. Yeah, the Neko wafers, yeah. right? And I was like, I'm doing this with a Boston hat, and I hate the damn team. And you made a lot of Boston hats since. And I love it. I mean, I can't. It's. I might hate the team, but I love making their hats. Everything yeah, it's just, good? yeah, everything's good. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. So, um, you know, and. I'm just always looking for different inspiration and if I see something that I think that uh, has a good color coordination, I'm going to go for it. You know? uh, I got two more questions for you, yep. John. All right, so the next one is which hat recently are you most disappointed in? So I, can I, I'll tell you, because I people always say I don't knock any of your stuff, right? Can I tell you which hat I'm, is my uh, least favorite of Mercedes weight? and the Nissan. <laughs> well, no, I'm gonna, those two are givens, okay? The Mercedes and the Nissan. Let's take those off the table. Those okay. are the worst. But. Um, the word, the, my least favorite hat that you made of late would be. The, the, um. There I would must say. Be the, a lot, huh? No, no, no. I'm, it's from. between two. I would say the Tide hat. Okay, okay. I would say the Tide hat. Okay. Understandable. But that, that doesn't mean, I, that doesn't mean like, I don't like it. It's just like my least favorite. Yeah, it's just, it's tough to pull off an orange hat. Yeah. yeah, but what's your what's your, what's yours? What I don't really, what I'm not proud of is uh, how some of the original uh, minor league hats came out, like the Mega Man. Oh, the uh, Mega Man is one that didn't do well, right? Yeah, I mean, it, that's it, sad a bit. It, it's sad a little bit, but that was you know when I remember before that the before the minor league hype. Uh, you used the Rumble Ponies on that, right? No, it was no. Um, the Arkansas. Travelers. Travelers. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That and some of the other minor leagues from that pack, because it was made in eight. Really oh, that's did. the one that you and I did. A, the we, Mudville Nine. The Mudville Nine was in there. Yep. The Vero At, Beach. The Vero Dodgers. Beach. Yep. And because those were made in Haiti, it was just yeah, it's a rough was pack. Very, it was a very rough not pack. not the colors, not the not the hats. No, just where they were, it's just, just where they were where manufactured. The, the construction, the quality was really yeah. bad. Yeah, it was off. Um, and then also, obviously, the Nissan and the and the Mercedes. It's because <laughs> I wanted to do something with uh, a Skyline GTR R34 GTR. Yeah. And also, they weren't supposed to be made. They just went through. So it was, people were destroying you on those, huh? It doesn't matter to me. You know? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I 
I wanted to try it and it came out and John, you know, you're, John, you're, you're a house. man that <laughs> takes risk, which I love. I but, have um, to. You know. All right, so last question, John, before we wrap up. Um, what, what's next for my fittage and you? Like, what's next? Um, what's next? Well, my dream is to have a my fitted logo on a Yankee hat, mm. uh, and then possibly work on a, a a collaboration with like different brands. Yeah. Um, but then again, I just want to be able to continue to tell my story. That's basically what I want to do. You know? Yeah. If I see a nice colorway and I have a, a good story to tell, I want to do. That's awesome, man. Well, John, I want to thank you for the time. This was fantastic. Now you can finish your chili fries. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>